Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and today we're talking about two things. One, image stabilization to make your footage look less like crap, and two, my thick luxurious mustache. The mustache is for Movember, which is a month-long campaign to raise awareness and funds for prostate cancer. Uh, check out the link in the description for that. It's a disease that affects a lot of men uh, later in life, so if you're over 30, start getting your ass checked out. And two, the image stabilization is to make your footage look better by using tools in post-production to fix shaky camera. Here's what it looks like when I'm not doing that. Really, really shaky. Let's put that back on. Basically, we're going to be using points to attract the camera tracker, uh, much like this mustache attracts women in their 50s. So, go ahead and start shooting some stuff, bring it into After Effects, and let's get to it. I'm cheating by using these glasses, and I've put little pieces of pink on the outsides, but I've covered it up in post, so you can't really see it. But I'll explain that later. So, let's power the fuck up. And now we're going to show you how to stabilize some footage. And step one is actually to put tiny markers on the thing you want to stabilize too. I've gone ahead and used these pink corners of sticky notes, um, which is a pretty cheap solution because I'm a pretty cheap guy, or so my dates tell me. So once you've got those stuck on there, put on your fancy glasses or whatever you're gonna do. If you're gonna be tracking something to your face, go ahead and stick some points on your face. I had originally considered using my mustache to track, but because my mouth moves around a lot, that would be really terrible. You want to stabilize to a stable object. And these glasses are about as stable as we're gonna get, and it creates a pretty trippy after effect. In After Effects. Okay, what you're gonna do is film your subject. Make sure that these tracking points are always in frame. If you lose them, you're gonna be fucked. And let's go ahead and stabilize some motion. We're gonna be using the Window Tracker. So go Window Tracker, open that up, and select the layer you wish to track, which is the only layer in the composition. And instead of Track Motion, we're gonna say Stabilize Motion. So you click that, and now you'll see it's cluttering up my workspace with a lot of stuff, so let me just rearrange these windows. This has our composition, and this has opened up our footage. So let's get that out here. Really the only thing you need to have out and looking at is your footage. And we're going to be tracking the position and the rotation, so we're actually going to be using two track points. You can track the scale as well, and all that does is interpret the distance between the two track points to create a scale vector. But you need two good points if you're going to track its position and its rotation to stabilize both of them. Now this can be important when you're trying to stabilize a horizon line, or any time where your footage is just going off the rails. Oh look, we can see the camera in this, that's pretty crappy. So, the track type is stabilized, because we're going to be stabilizing footage. Position, rotation, good. The target, you click Edit Target, this is what we're going to apply it to, and we're going to apply all of these things to the layer itself, okay? So, let's go ahead and take these tracking points, and you can see when you drag them, it kind of zooms in, and move it over here to this pink thing, and move this one over here to this pink thing. Oh, Evan, that's so simple. Obviously, I put the trackers on the tracking points. So you'll notice these two boxes around each tracking point. The outside box is how far in each frame is going to search for what's inside this little box. So we would like it to be only concerned with tracking pink triangle right here and depending on how much you think it's going to move per frame you're gonna to wanna to shrink or grow this and what that does is basically gives After Effects its search range so if this is huge it's gonna eat up a lot of your RAM every time because it's checking inside this box for the contents of this box and we're doing that twice over so if you don't have a powerful machine you need to come up with a new hobby so let me just go over here and set this one up as well. Now, the options are something you're going to want to mess around with too. All right, so you can give the name, give it a new name if you want. Tracker plugin, the only one I have is the built-in one. Now, here's the important stuff. What channel is the tracker going to be making its decisions based on? 
You can use the luminance, the RGB or you know color, so differences in the actual color value, differences in only the luminance value, or how dark and bright it is, difference in the saturation, which is how saturated or monotone the colors are. For us, we can notice here that the area we've selected is different in both RGB and luminance. Luma values are probably one of the best to use if you have straight black and white trackers. If you're using blue or green dots, probably RGB is the one you want to use. We're using this bright pink on black glasses, so I'm actually going to keep it on luminance. Process before match is basically how you're going to be treating the footage before it has a look at it. I usually use the enhance uh, feature just because I want to get the sharpest track possible and because I have the RAM to spare. If you don't have the RAM to spare, start suffering. Now these other things here, track field, sub-pixel positioning, adapt feature on every frame, these are all also things that are going to eat into your RAM. Sub-pixel positioning is good when you don't have a lot of pixels to work with. I'm on HD footage, so what do I care, right? Now here's a real important one that's going to make your tracking, you know, suck or rock. Right now it's told to adapt the tracking feature if confidence is below 80%. So if on the frame-by-frame -frame comparison it thinks, you know, it's less than 80% sure that it's correct, it's going to pick a new feature to look at. I don't like that because it can cause your tracking point to start to migrate across your subject when it starts to find what it thinks are appropriate tracking points. It's wrong. The computer is stupid. You want to get some more control, so what I do is I go to stop tracking so that when it fails at being confident, once its confidence breaks, then, you know, it finds something new. 80% uh, is good. Um, if your confidence level is below 80%, you should stop doing whatever you're doing. I prefer to have my confidence personally at 110% all the time because I'm that sure of myself. So stop tracking if your confidence is below 80%. That's good advice. And, you know, make sure you build that into uh, the rest of your life. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, start tracking forward and backwards. So starting at the first frame... I'm going to press the play button here, which will cause it to start analyzing my footage moving forwards. Now look at it. It stopped, right? It went a few frames, and then it ground to a halt, because its confidence dropped below 80%. Now, it didn't really have to. It was actually pretty spot on, but I appreciate that it checked with me before doing anything more. Now, you'll find that you might want to dumb down this confidence thing to maybe like a 50, depending on how chunky it's going along. Yeah, 50 seems to be working quite well. Now, you can watch me do this, or we can just skip right ahead to the end. It's important at this stage to also keep an eye on the trackers to make sure that they're not doing anything strange. Just keep an eye on it. Be patient. And if you fuck it up, you have to do it all over again. This is also a good time to get a snack. I've been really addicted to Snickers bars recently. Might download Minecraft for my iPhone. Now, if you run into a situation where the tracker falls off, you can go back to the frame where it fell off, try to reposition it better, and just go through one frame at a time, helping it along, coaching it a little bit. The tracker actually, and this is very strange, is more accurate when you go through it one frame at a time than when you press play. Okay, tracking time is over. Make sure you're targeting the layer that you tracked. OK, and apply. Apply it to the X and Y dimensions. You can apply it to the X only or the Y only, but, you know, I don't know why you would. Close that, and let's see what we have done. What have we done? We have this thing that is really askew right now, but look. The glasses stay wonderfully stuck in the middle of the frame. Because that's the thing that we tracked and referenced to. So what it's done is it's moved the anchor point to constantly be at tracking point one. And it's used the, uh, you know, some position value that it just made up to keep it in frame on frame one. And it's taken a rotation vector based on the delta between tracking point one and tracking point two and then work that backwards so that they're constantly in a straight line. 
Now what are we supposed to do with this? I mean, it sounds all well and good, but as you can see, it's bouncing all over the place and making these big stupid black holes everywhere. Well, one thing is, I made sure to record this in 1080 because I knew that later I would have those problems. So then I take the composition, lock its ratio in 16 by 9, and dumb it down to be only 720 high by 1280 wide, effectively making this 720p footage. Now it's kind of askew, I've still got some black marks, some holes that might come through, and to move the footage around effectively, create a new null object, parent your footage to that null object, like so, or by selecting it in this menu, pick whip or menu, both good options for parenting. Now you can use this null object to stretch and move and all that good stuff to position this thing and rotate it a little bit if you'd like to get everything in line just how you like it. Uh, I've gone ahead and used that to stick the glasses firmly in the center of the screen and that is pretty much that. Um, you've just successfully stabilized your motion. So the two things to remember when you're filming it is one, shoot a larger plate than you'll use, meaning make sure that you have an area that you are safe to crop out when you start using this technique. And it's true with any image stabilization technique that as you start to have to move your clean plate around, you're gonna have to cut off parts of it. There will be loss, and loss is an acceptable part of life. It's healthy, it's natural. You know, if you're feeling bad, read some Zen Buddhism. The other thing is tracking points. These two tracking points right here. Now, unfortunately, it also means that I now have pink on my glasses. Oh, oh, but you probably noticed I didn't have that on my glasses in the intro video. Anyway, I'll show you how to do that in another video. Click on the link to go see that, blah 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 Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Follow me on Twitter if you have any questions. Check out my Facebook page. Uh, the links to those are in the description. If you have any suggestions for other tutorials or just want to shoot the shit about After Effects or really nerdy stuff, hit me up on there. You know, tell me how much my mustache sucks. It's really askew and totally not the same color as the rest of my head hair. But I'm Evan Abrams. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll see you around the internet.